Because they're just in the order that I received them, crazy man. Alright, welcome to a 1v1 on La Glaze. This game is going to be Polish Prince vs. Fire Flake Finn. We're going to have Polish Prince playing as Soviets in the south, Fire Flake Finn playing as Obokrena West in the north. I guess La Glaze breakout would be more accurate. And again, this map has received a lot of crazy changes since, uh... Since most of my casts on. I've done one cast on it since it got changed, but that cast was extremely short. So this will be the first time I've done a cast on this map. That's probably going to be more than 10 minutes long. <laughs> I, I don't actually know. Conscripts engaging stern piles over here on the right side are off to a pretty good start. Ooh! Stern piles are off to a good start until that Molotov gets tossed, then it kind of turns the engagement back to even. Conscripts jumping in this building don't have very many windows they can engage out of. They might get wiped. Stern piles also might get wiped, though. Look at all those conscripts arriving to support in the engagement in that huge volley. Stern piles go down. Conscripts are fine. So four conscript opening plus Molotovs for Polish Prince right there wins him that engagement. Definitely uh, needs to send that home, though. <laughs> there they go. And these three squads are going to move to take control of the right. But the Stern Pio is dead. Fireflake Finn's off to a pretty hard start. He has gone Koopa Wagon and MG34, so he has two suppression sources, but no damage sources. Stern Pio's are your only DPS as OKW early on. So not good. That is that is very bad. He got a little greedy trying to wipe that squad, and it cost him his own Sturms. Definitely not a good trade. Over here on the left side, Folks Grenadier is going to uh, take control of this victory point. MG34 firing on these conscripts by the munitions. And this building being gone gives this map a, such a different feel. I'm so used to it being right there. It's so weird. Cool wagon's falling dangerously low right here. It's gonna die. Pulling it back. Conscripts jumping into the house on the flank with the MG34 set up sideways while the Koopa wagon continues to cover the approach, the south approach. Oh, oh no! Abandoned! Conscripts wiped, the rest retreat. I'd say that this is now a pretty even game again. As long as he recovers that thing. Koopa Wagon. I think the Koopa Wagon's biggest strength, personally, at least this is what I use it for, clearly that's what Fireflake is also using it for, is as bait. It's basically just really good bait. <laughs> I, you would not believe how many forces your opponent will throw at you to try and get this thing killed. He needs to recover it and get it repaired though, I don't know why he wouldn't do that. It's only two Folks Grenadier models to throw in that thing and get that back in action. He leaves this building, sets up the fire against these conscripts. They're in green cover, I think. Doesn't look like they're gonna get suppressed. But I don't think the conscripts will win this. There they go. Engagement is one for Fireflake. Two squads of conscripts heading left to get that under control. And we've got commander selections. Luftwaffe for the MG34s versus guard motor coordination. No doctrinal units selected yet by Polish Prince. Now Kubelwagen is still just sitting there abandoned. If he doesn't recover that, then he really did not win that engagement at all. Conscripts for a Kubelwagen, pretty even trade for manpower. So, maybe he just doesn't want it anymore? <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know why he would not recover that. That's really strange. Good work, comrades. This now belongs to us. Flamethrower in the church. Catches Folks Grenadiers. Why aren't they retreating? <laughs> oh, they're asking to die. They just took three flame bursts. They could all be dead right now. Fortunately, no crits. MG34 in the building. Oh, there he goes. He finally recovers that thing with this squad of Folks Grenadiers and he's repairing it with Sturm Piles. And we've got a battle group headquarters going up over here on the right side. Pretty late tech, by the way. Wait until seven minutes to build his first tech structure. I'm going to very much delay the purchase of vet of tier 4 or even tier 3 so he's not going to have any vehicles with any Jagdpanzer for an extremely long time. 
which is which means he'll struggle to punish his opponent if he stalls for call-ins. Ooh, get a little, gets a little too close to the base defenses right there. Whoa! Taking huge damage, what is he doing? Squad wipe by the base defenses. Not a very good start for the Soviet player who's now lost two full squads of conscripts. One diving that Koop wagon, the other diving into the base to kill two Folks Grenadier models. Two flamethrowers catching these Folks Grenadiers over here on the right side may put them in serious danger. They don't retreat. There's one crit. Grenade toss? No, he canceled the grenade toss. There's another grenade toss. Then he retreats. Ooh, and he gets the wipe! opponent was not watching carefully enough and he gets out of there with only one model lost and a full squad wipe that is three squads wiped for the Soviet player I would say the Obercommander West has pulled well back into the lead after the initial loss of his terms having lost nothing since then and inflicted three squad wipes plus we're going to see heavy mortar fielded and guards fielded so 730 manpower dropped on Collins just now to try and bring things back into his favor. Meanwhile, forward retreat point going up over here from Firefly Finn. I don't know if I would get a, a forward retreat point in this situation. I just inflicted three squad wipes. I don't have that much map control. I think in that situation I would get myself one or two more squads instead. Or maybe an infantry support gun. Although on this map, I don't know if I think an infantry support gun will perform that well. Maybe. It's, there's a lot of vision blockers, though. Mortars are a lot better than howitzers. On this particular map. In most situations. But as Obra Commander West, you, you have to work with what you've got. Wagon's gonna die any second of PTRS fire. Oh, <laughs> our heavy mortar will abandon it again. <laughs> that was a pretty good shot, but heavy mortar gets taken out by Sturm Pios on the flank. Don't know if that was being monitored. He's gonna go for the salvage, screening with Sturm Pios. They're gonna take heavy damage very quickly. They need to get out of there. Just trying to screen for them with just enough time. Does get that heavy mortar destroyed. That's 400 more manpower right down the drain for the Soviet player. Over Commander West taking a massive lead right now. The only way the Soviet player can come back from this is with fuel purchases because of his excellent map control. He needs to either tech up and get some tier 3 on the field or I don't know, get some miracle squad wipes. His map control is not going to last for long with only 5 squads up against what his opponent has fielded and Falschermager just came onto the field as an elite infantry replacement since he has no tier 4 won't be planning to get tier 4 maybe. I don't know, he's got the fuel for it. The truck has arrived at the 11 minute mark just now, but um, not sure what his next tech decision will be. Having gone full from Yeager, I'm actually I would be a little bit surprised to see tier 4. Not that surprised. <laughs> and the Koopa Wagon gets stolen by these guards right here and immediately <laughs> abandoned again. Wow, what is going on? That is the third time that that Koopa Wagon has been abandoned. There's some sort of, some sort of haunted Koopa Wagon situation going on right there. Where it's just cursed. It's like, have you guys seen that that really bad movie about the car that's like haunted? It's like a it's an adaptation of a Stephen King Stephen King book. It's called like Cassie or Carrie or something. I don't remember. It's about a car though. The car is haunted and kills kills everybody <laughs> that the owner likes. Oh, I wish I could remember what that was called. But this Koopa wagon is that car. That's that's what we're deciding. Even though that doesn't really make sense. That analogy doesn't really make any sense at all. <laughs> now that I'm really thinking about it. It's gonna drive me nuts if I can't remember what that movie was called though. That movie slash book. What was that movie called? Damn it.
Tier 3 going up here in the Soviet base, trying to capitalize on that huge early map control. 13 minutes... 13 minute T-34 with only 5 command points. Seems to make sense. Good and ready. Wait, is he stuck right here? <laughs> I don't think so. That is pretty weird truck placement though. You want to put it a little, like, not too close. You don't want to put it in a situation where you're going to have, like, a pathing nightmare. <laughs> You could definitely have placed that in a slightly different way. In case you guys couldn't tell, I am furiously trying to remember what that fucking movie was called right now. <laughs> uh, God, I hate it when this happens to me. You guys know that feeling, right? When you're like trying to remember something really bad, but it just is not coming to you. Christine! Christine! Thank you, Just Tanks! Oh my god, yes. Oh. Christine. That Kuba Wagon is Christine. Alright, anyway, moving on. <laughs> Two squads of Falschermjäger on the field now. He's gone tier 4, so I feel like investing this much into Falschermjäger may be a little bit too much. But, um. He could prove me wrong. On this map, it is very much a medium range map. They might perform a little bit better than Obersoldat with their LMGs, although it has been made into more of a long range map by the removal of so many buildings. He's trying to utilize Falschmager as well as he can. It's really important to use Falschmager with green cover. But they're off to a pretty good start here. Ooh, but there's a T-34 now, and he is going to get caught with almost no anti-tank. Molotov inflicts a lot of damage on one of the models standing in the fire. They need to get to safety. He should be able to get away with only two lost models. That's about 100 manpower. It's not the end of the world. But he loses a full folks grenadier squad on the left side. I wasn't even watching that engagement. They all get wiped in their harassment attempt for that victory point. I'm not sure if he was monitoring the engagement. He cannot afford to play too risky with his only Panzer Shrek. He needs to be careful. He does have Panzer Fausts. No Raketenwerfers, though. And no fuel to grab a... anything. Yag Panzer or Panther or whatever. T-34 is falling low, but he really cannot afford to take any further risks with that one Panzer Shrek squad. That is his only anti-tank. He needs to get that to safety. T-34 continues to engage here. It's getting a little bit low, but there's, again, very little that can actually threaten it. If it gets too close to the Tier 4 structure, it'll probably be destroyed. So he's just going to keep on working on the machine gun here while he has an opening. He doesn't have any vision over here of the uh, this road, and leaving himself a little bit vulnerable to... Rakenwar for fire from this area. That Koopa wagon still hasn't been destroyed. <laughs> or even recovered. Although it has gotten to the point in the game where a Koopa wagon is of pretty limited usefulness. Falschermager trying to get in range for the Panzer Faust. Oh, keep that T-34 going. I think that's going to go down. Panzer Shrock shot went wide, though. Apparently a flamethrower squad was over here trying to plant a mine and they got wiped and dropped their flamethrower. Jeez. Okay, there it goes. T-34 destroyed. Well, having also gone T-70 is going to really hurt his fuel a lot. He's not going to be able to get those call-ins anytime soon, but his map control continues to be absolutely just dominant. He's also wiped a Volksgrenadier squad, which, I mean, that's not that big of a deal. To make a new folks grenadier squad. He spent a lot of manpower on tech. 500 into this truck, 200 more into this truck, and then uh, third squad of Falschmager just now. So yeah, a lot of manpower being spent on Falschmager. I feel like it's a little too much. That's probably about 1,500, maybe maybe even 1,600 in manpower, depending on reinforcement costs. I haven't been watching model losses too carefully, but this is really expensive to maintain. He's got to be very careful not to do what he's currently doing. Oh my god, the manpower bleed. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Look at that, he's using vehicle cover. I was... 
I was actually just talking about this recently, how nobody uses vehicle cover. That was pretty cool. Although he left his position in vehicle cover, I think he could have stayed. Until his opponent threw that suicidal grenade. Well, with the T-34 dead, the T-70 is now the only counter-harassment unit. 440 manpower just evaporated instantly because he flung a squad of Fallschirmjäger at a T-70. <sighs> Over Crane OS player working the right side while the T-70 is occupied on the left. Finally, Christine is destroyed. Folks, Grenadiers reinforcing here in the base. DP machine gun has been recovered by these Folks Grenadiers. They're going to make their way through the center to engage these guards. Get out of the house! No, that's the end of that machine gun. That machine gun made it to vet too. Is actually a pretty useful weapon for the amount of time that he did manage to keep it alive. I don't think it's a very good idea to jump back inside of a house with only a tiny amount of health remaining, though, because you're pretty much asking for what just happened to happen. Trying to get back control of some territory now that the Soviet player has been reduced to almost nothing left. Guards falling pretty low in the building, and there they go, they have to retreat. And I think the Soviet player is trying to make it to Collins. Because the Overcrano West has been so slow at getting map control back, the fuel is just... Even when he had... He barely had any fuel left after going T-70. He's already back up to almost 260. That's just how strong his map control has been this game. These squads reinforcing by the base. This, by the way, this super traffic jam prone area leaves you quite vulnerable to artillery of all forms. But fortunately, Polish Prince has none, except for the heavy mortar, which died after its very first engagement, having killed nothing but a Kuba wagon crew. <laughs> so... Not that much danger inherent to this situation, other than maybe T-34-85 shots on really clumped infantry. And he needs to start preparing for those Collins to arrive. One Panzerschreck is not going to cut it against two T-34s. He really needs to get a Raketten, at least one Raketenwerfer. Throw down some mines. He just needs to be, just needs to be thinking about those Collins, because they're going to get here at some point. If he doesn't prepare... He's going to lose control of the game again. And he's only very briefly had control of this game. He's finally going to complete this mine over here. Could probably think about recovering this flamethrower as well. It's something. It's better to recover it with conscripts, really. I'm surprised that uh, Fireflake Finn didn't grab it when he had a chance. Also, for those of you complaining about calling Fallschirmjäger in from off, is it Fallschirmjäger or Fallschirmjäger? Schirmjäger. I, oh, I pronou I've pronounced that wrong for my entire life, apparently. Fallschirmjäger. Falsch I can't pronounce that word. It's too hard. I need to work on my German pronunciations. That means umbrella, right? Schirm. Wow, look at that damage. That DP machine gun on those Folks Grenadiers doing work on the flank of the guards in that green cover position. They almost get wiped, get away very narrowly right there. T-70 trying to work on infantry in this these cover positions. Enemy fire! Enemy fire! 
Run, Sturmpiles! What are you doing? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, come on. That T70 is wreaking havoc on the OKW because he insists on engaging it with infantry. Has still not purchased a Rakenwerfer, and he's purchased a third squad of Fall Fallschirmjäger. That's my best attempt. Fallschirmjäger. Was that pretty good? <laughs> Which is, well, fourth, actually. He had a three and then immediately lost his third one, so fourth squad of Fallschirmjäger. Which is too many. <laughs> That is probably getting close to 2,000 manpower he spent on these. For the return he's gotten out of them, 12 kills, 2 on this squad, none on this one, yet 1 on this one. Clearly, he has not gotten a very good return on that investment. He's going to have to use all three of them very carefully to do so. Not exactly easy. And I don't know why he purchases those ones, like why did he even go tier 4? He hasn't even made a single tier 4 unit, including... Uh, Ooh, that was a good grenade, though. This Fallschirmjäger spam is so popular. I've been seeing this so much lately. Like... I, I almost feel like this is an evolving meta. And I don't know why, because it does not seem to work very well at all. But, uh, it's definitely a phenomenon that I have been noticing. This must be, like, what, the fourth replay? Maybe it's always been like this. Maybe people have always just liked them because they're really cool but I mean, and the sound their gun makes is awesome. <laughs> but I really don't find it to be a particularly effective strategy. One of the main reasons, not only are they super manpower hungry, they're also super munitions hungry. Trying to maintain a f like an effective force of multiple squads of these requires them to constantly be throwing grenades, Panzerfausts, OKW already doesn't have that much munitions to spare, which is why I feel that one squad of Fallstream Jaeger is always the best. Because then you can use that one squad to their fullest potential. You can dedicate all of your micro attention to that one squad, make sure they're always engaging cost effectively, and utilizing all their abilities and vetting up. Vet 5, that squad of Fallstream Jaeger is, uh, is beastly. Wow, and that's apparently the game. Uh, I guess he went all in on that one Panzer Shrek squad. <laughs> he had another Panzer Shrek right here. But apparently these T-3485s were too scary and he just surrendered. I don't even know if I think he'd lost. <laughs> Wait, he had a Panther in production. <laughs> Why would he quit? Because he just lost that one... What? Okay. <laughs> GG, I guess. I actually, if I'm being honest, who surrendered? Does it say? I don't know who won. <laughs> I think Polish Prince won. He had a Panther about to complete though, so that's a little weird. GG, somebody won. <laughs>